also I like to thank uh, Francisco for his uh, very kind invitation to allow me to join this uh, prestigious group and to share some of my view. Uh, so what I want to talk today is more linked to the, to the solution because we mentioned today many of the descriptive analysis about the, the problems and uh, we need to solve the problems and of course. And uh, the first thing we, we think about is about the regulation and of course we need to act to push and, uh, and actors, economic actors, both uh, companies and individuals to, to react to these uh, crises and try to cope with the challenges. However, we also need to move uh, our actors and uh, we are making a lot of uh, noises in order to make the social awareness about individuals to preserve water, to respect the environment, but also the, the economic actors like uh, companies, how we should uh, uh, work with that. And we all know that that becomes a very hot topic in the business school educations. Uh, you might know that uh, in some global rankings like uh, Financial Times, they introduce some criteria uh, talking about the teaching content uh, efforts made by business schools to educate the future leaders of these economic actors. So. Uh, I'd like to share with you some of my views and some of the uh, experience we are doing, try to make that happen in a more effective way. As I said, they're happening, but when they're happening, there is a consensus that we try to impose in a traditional way, uh, these, uh, we start with uh, uh, social responsibility, uh, CSR, then since 2004, as you all know, with the United Nations report, we start to move towards uh, ESG, and uh, it's a, a dominant topic, but it's still very controversial, uh, especially when we educate the, the, the very eminent business, future business leaders. I'm talking about the segment of uh, uh, MBA and executive MBAs, and we all know from the uh, sociology or psychology that uh, these people, uh, the value system, are extremely difficult to change because they are already adults. When we talk about MBAs, they are 30 years old, and the executive MBAs, they are 35, even 40 years old on average. So actually, it's very difficult to change. And in many business schools, including uh, ours, we try to do at the beginning in a conventional way, try to uh, impose some compulsory courses or modules and try to uh, uh, advocate the necessity of, uh, of ESG or, 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 or at the beginning CSR uh, in a way to promote uh, business ethics. But the, the real issue is that when you promote that, uh, there's a lot of storytelling first and and sometimes you, you just impose it as a necessary pain. Or so try to move your uh, executive student into a higher ground, saying that you are doing something good, uh, greater for the society. So, as you know, there's a lot of skepticism uh, behind that uh, way. And we actually did some uh, uh, survey among our students and we see clearly that there are some criticism saying that if I'm in a better financial situation, I might consider something like this or uh, everyone is imposing us, I have to do it because if not, I, can get, I cannot get rid of uh, that and I cannot run away. So there's a lot of resistance and very passive acceptance of these kind of ideas. So for that reason, we are, we are with our, my colleagues, we try to innovate and try to find a new way uh, to put the, the environmental as, as, as the, the leading uh, factor, but also the social factor, as a strategic lever in the business school and, and in the consideration of, of business-related decisions. So what we did uh, very recently, since a year, I share that with uh, Francisco, that's why he encouraged me to share here, was to work with a very big uh, uh, software company called the SAP, you know, the German company. And they also have the, uh, the second largest uh, uh, research center in China after a German headquarter. So we work very closely, and now we have one uh, brand new simulation 
to our executive student. And actually, our ambition is that from next year, that module will be compulsory to everybody. So it, it, it is actually a business sim simulation that we, in which we will incorporate all these factors of ESG, and we start with environment. So basically, we try to let our executive student to make individual decisions on these uh, uh, environmental related, like the carbon uh, footprint, scope one, scope two, or how your, your uh, work, uh, we heard from the, the, the lady uh, before me uh, um, talking, uh, uh, talking about the issue of our supply chain. So we try to, to let the, the change of the behavior of your supply uh, chain so that your suppliers basically uh, that will modify your uh, financial statement. So we start with a real uh, company, and of course then we will see each decision, how that will impact their financial statements and how that will impact their final results, their final uh, net income, and finally how that will impact on their market capitalization. So that will bring some very visible impact of each of the decision and how that will uh, change their calculation about to manage, uh, to manage their companies. And uh, also we try to introduce that I got an inspiration from a very uh, important uh, uh, French company called Valeo. And now they are inventing some new uh, uh, suppliers to their car companies, as you know, uh, in order to reduce the carbon emissions of their uh, customers, basically. And by doing that, of course, they create more value and they can increase their uh, uh, margins and sales numbers. Again, uh, we use that, we borrow that story and to show the student and by changing, ma making innovations, you can not only save the planet, but also you can improve your value. So basically what we are doing is try to go beyond the, the, the kind of storytelling lecture, and we try to, through the simulation, to show the students, the executives, how that will impact uh, on their day-to-day -day business and how they, they should incorporate these elements into their strategy uh, decisions. And another thing we are doing, and uh, um, actually I will visit uh, uh, Paris uh, next month, uh, uh, I got a group of uh, leading French companies uh, engaged with us. Uh, they are Danone, uh, they are BMP Paribas, they are Valeo, they are also uh, LVMH. From each of their sectors, they will show to our executive student what is the best practice, uh, how they start their uh, in, in inventing this strategy and how they implement and uh, what are the results. I just, give me one more uh, minute, I just share one example, very concrete, uh, it will become a, one of our teaching case, is the BMP Baribas uh, joint venture with EDF uh, to create a company called Domo Finance. And that company is actually a green finance uh, a company to support individuals to upgrade their uh, uh, residence in order to reduce the carbon emission and, uh, and, uh, and uh, energy preservation. So basically, everyone can win from it. It's a business, and EDF can, can identify the, their customers, and the, the individuals can reduce the, 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 the pay for the electricity. Uh, in, in the meantime, they can get the tax rebate, tax uh, deduction because of this green investment, and at the end, they also improve the value of their house. So we can show a lot of concrete examples to our executives to open their mind, to give them more imagination, to let them feel the pain if they don't do it, in order to change their uh, past dependence and try to become more uh, environmental friendly in the way to make their business. Thank you very much. Thank you.